This conference will class? now be recorded. Okay. Okay. You're all set, Catherine. Thank you. I want to make sure I've got the agenda here. With me just a second. I lost track of it here. There it is. Okay, uh, members present, everybody's present. Here for the public. Anybody want to speak from the public tonight? That sounds like a no. First Linda is waving her hand. I, I, oh, I don't see her. Yeah. Sorry. Forgive me. Okay. Uh, do you want to hear from me under here from the public or uh, yes, somewhere else? Anywhere you want. Go okay. for it. Thank you. It's nice to see the board members. Um, it's been a little bit. I think the last time that we met was uh, maybe over uh, the, the uh, governor's deferment again. And so now as we come up on a, a year, I think March 18th was our first closed day a year ago. I want to thank the board for uh, doing your part and keeping us safe and uh, transitioning through this incredible time. And as we've all uh, learned to do things differently, I just want the board to know what an incredible team of people uh, that uh, we have here in town offices that have tried to evolve many efficiencies and work under the circumstances and trying to serve the public. And for myself, I think I've become a, a pretty much a solo practitioner in the past year due to the constraints of COVID. We were on the verge of maybe hiring extra help in my office and that all kind of shut down. So uh, again, I wanna say thank you. And as I look at my collections, uh, my real estate is at 96.34%. My personal property is at 96.36%. And the motor vehicles, which um, is a little trickier, we had the deferred grace period, is at 91.48%. And with the three year registrations, uh, we're a little bit more challenged in getting uh, that revenue in. Plus, uh, with all the deferments on registrations in the past year, and emissions, et cetera. Again, it's uh, just a little bit more challenging um, bringing that revenue in. And for my office, we did not um, put all of the constraints on reporting people to DMV because of COVID. So uh, we're still working hard to bring everything in. And now as things are lifting a little bit, I have to look at the properties and again, take it to tax sale. So when I have that uh, portfolio together, I will bring it to the board to let you know. And um, for Bill, and for Bill, you, you've been here for the tax sales, the previous ones, and we still would use the same attorney and under the same guidelines and it would not cost the town. But these are properties that are um, uh, typically non-owner occupied and they have a couple of years worth of taxes and we have to move on them. So uh, at any rate, my main thing is thank you for keeping us all safe. We really appreciate that. Well, Linda, thank you. I, I know I speak for everybody, but naturally they can speak for themselves. We appreciate all the efforts of you and your colleagues down there at Town Hall in particular, but throughout the entire town. Linda, the on the property tax, you said you were at 60, uh, excuse me, 96.4? 96.34 on real estate and 96.36 on personal property. And motor vehicles is at 91.48. Do you know off the top of your head, <clears throat> how that compares with this time last year with real estate? 
I don't. I haven't run that analysis. Okay. I'd have to run. I'd have to run um, a chart. And of course, right now, people who are paying their second installments are feeling. Most of them are feeling pretty good because they're not late. They're deferred, so people are not angry because they have that uh, grace period to April one, which is a Thursday. I might add. Uh, so we can't use that Dropbox on Thursday because the the offices are not staffed that we could verify. But people have been extremely, extremely gracious. And this deferment has given them an opportunity to spread out their taxes a little bit more. That's good. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Linda. Uh, first selectmen's briefing. I would like to share something. Uh, just let me get there. Um, John, would you let me share my screen? Sure, just a second. Okay, you should be able to do that now. Thank you. I want to get the right thing here. Bear with me. Can you see my screen? No. no. Nope, not yet. Oh, maybe no, I'm... Yet. Oh, there it is. And I want to share the screen of this monitor. You sure I can do that? It's got a line through sharing screen. Oh, um, can you see it now? There we go. Yeah. Does it have a yellow line through it? Through the yeah. All right, this is the information that we've gotten um, from uh, the federal, uh, what's the result of the federal uh, changes that are coming through. So this, these are estimates of what we're going to get for federal stimulus for 2022 for ESSER, which is education, if I understand correctly, and for 23. These are fiscal year ends. And then the American Rescue Plan, this is what we have for non-education and then for education. So this, these are just, at this point in time, they're estimates, but it is my understanding that some of these monies are already going out. So I don't know if Bill, if you've heard anything different or um, Roger. No, uh, Catherine, just for clarification now, these are money in excess of what our anticipated revenues have been in the past? Yes, we didn't get ES, uh, this S or T right. before. Okay. And this is the rescue plan. Now I'm looking into how we're allowed to spend this money with what the rules are around that. But I wanted to at least show you this and I'll be looking into it more closely and you can as well. Um, I know uh, they wanna talk with me about that at the next uh, Board of Finance meeting. Okay, any questions? Anything else you've heard? Nope. I'm gonna stop sharing. Can we get back to here? Okay. Uh, could Catherine, could you forward uh, email us those uh, a copy of what you just showed us here to Roger and I? Sure, will. Okay. Uh, what is the next thing on the agenda? I'm just having trouble getting back to that. Uh, here from public, here from boards, from boards and commissions. Uh, do, we don't have anything that we're hearing from boards or commissions at this point, correct? Right. Didn't think so. Next thing is minutes. Is that correct? Yes. Um, uh, if you've reviewed the minutes, does anybody uh, would anybody like to make a motion to accept them, or has any changes? I'll make the motion to accept. We have a second. I will second Roger's motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, motion passes. Thank you. 
What's the next thing on the item on the agenda? And bear with me because I have a multiple things pulled up here. Um, is it the uh, reopening, our, strategy. reopening plan? Yay. Okay. So I have, uh, I had already been talking to Joe about the swap shed. And uh, he and I have walked the property to try and figure out the best way to manage that at the transfer station. And uh, so what I'm going to show you is what he and I have come up with. Do we know what that echo, is that an echo? Maybe. So let me pull this over. All right. So I'm going to call this partial reopening plan because it's not, they're not full opens. And uh, can we talk these through? So the transfer station, uh, like I said, we walked the property, we looked at all kinds of options. And um, what we came up with is to establish a temporary swap area in the lower portion of the transfer station and execute that on four weekends starting on April 17th. The beginning of April has Easter. The guys have Sunday off, et cetera. They're going to need a little time to get things set up properly as well. Um, the uh, One of the things I'll be doing, the, and we'll need a third transfer station worker for those weekends because we're going to have that whole lower area, in a sense, available for swapping. That's to manage the tsunami of, of items that we anticipate are going to come in. And it may be that we only have that for a couple of weekends, but we're going to plan for four weekends. The uh, There is an EMD storage bin, much like the one where they put, and I don't know what it's called, where they put the uh, washing machines and things like that down on that lower level. Uh, we're uh, looking at moving the EMD storage bin to that area temporarily to use that. Joe has toyed with the idea of moving the swap shed down there, the main swap shed. Uh, I'm leaving that to his discretion to figure out if that's really a good thing to do. At least he would, uh, he was talking about having it down there at least temporarily to manage this. Um, we need to set up cones to demarc boundaries for that right side of the pathway. We have about 40 feet for swap items that comes right out into part of the road. And we have plenty of room on the other side to have a lane that is for uh, people passing through. Um, so the right side would have a drop-off area, would have a parking area, probably back where the um, asphalt trucks park, because we only have one right there, there right now. It's my understanding that they're moving to another town sometime in the very near future. Uh, we'll need the left side for traffic flow. It's part of the reason we need a person down there. We need to put up some go slow and parking signs, uh, you know, letting people know there's a certain amount of risk down there. We're also talking about setting up sections for tools, toys, furniture, housewares, so that when people put things there in areas, it's a little bit organized for other people to be able to go through. And that would be either in the shed or on the grass or on tables out in that area. Uh, the, the thing here about a time limit is, whoops, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back. Um, is that we, we don't wanna make it a festival, much as it would be fun to do that. It's a kind of a dangerous place for people to be passing through and kids running around and that kind of thing. So uh, uh, also we wouldn't want everybody loitering all day down there because that in itself will create a tra traffic jam. So I don't know if it seems appropriate to set some kind of a reasonable time limit for people to be there. Uh, not being uh, Gestapo by any means, but kind of just, I know we have some people in town and they have been more vocal, a number of them, who like to go to the swap shed, get stuff there, loiter a bit and then sell it on their front lawn and it's that's i don't care personally how we get rid of the stuff people want to be enterprising that's fine 
It's just that we would like to make sure that there's a decent traffic flow through there. People are able to get through there. They're able to uh, look at things, have a little time to do that, and then move on, have the rest of their day. Okay. Um, at the end of each Sunday, the transfer station workers would assess the remaining items, look at those that they feel are really worth keeping, and discard the rest so that we don't have it just piling up there. Um, we're looking at what the weather would be. If the weather is truly inclement, we would find a way to either cover the stuff or do something. Haven't worked that piece out yet. Are we going to be doing this on Wednesdays? Uh, we would prefer not to do it on Wednesdays because it gets dark. Yep. And so if we just make it the weekends, great. I can anticipate, I do anticipate there'll be some people who want to stop there on Wednesdays. You know, if there's stuff out, they can take it. We're not going to be able to truly stop people, but it's really the weekends that we're thinking that that's, especially the first weekend, that there's going to be uh, more stuff down there. So what's your thinking on this? Bill, you want to check with your wife? <laughs> <laughs> we all have stuff to get rid of. And we, you know, we truly understand that, you know, the whole town is kind of clamoring for a place to get rid of their things that they think others can use. So. Well, my, my thought is, and I appreciate the work you've put into this, Catherine. I kind of wish you had sent this to us before our meeting tonight so we could have a chance to, you know, let it sink in a little more and absorb it for discussion. But um, I think in theory it's good. Uh, have you consulted? I, I happened to call Joe today just because you had said you were going to ask him for this meeting for discussions about this. And he told me he had met with you and, and gone over things. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, I didn't, I, Bill, I didn't yeah. know who you said I was going to talk with. When I brought this up at our last meeting, you said you were going to ask Joe Kalinowski yes. to come to this meeting. And I thought we'd all said that was probably a good idea. Uh, so I, I don't know that he was available tonight, but we did go through all of this. Yeah. Um, but any, my only other thought, have you consulted with anybody on the transfer station committee for any input from them, Catherine? Not for this, because the transfer station committee um, hasn't met yet. They'll be meeting, I hope, in April. Um, a number of the people who are on the transfer station committee have been involved with other committees, uh, particularly uh, capital improvement uh, and some other things that are going on. So I was trying not to tie them up too much until we got past getting our budget together, at least, to bring to the Board of Finance. Uh, I, I just know for years, many of them feel like they're a part of that transfer station. I wouldn't want anybody to get their nose bent out of the shape. That... The person I did talk with is, uh, I talked with Charlie and Tony. Uh-huh. Okay. I didn't talk about the date because I wanted Joe to have the opportunity to talk with him. But I talked with him this weekend, talked yeah. to the general plan, and they seemed fine with the plan. But I... I didn't want to talk over Joe. You know, he, he talks to his guys. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I wasn't sure if he was going to have the opportunity. Again, Joe and I really walked the property on Friday. Prior to that, he was thinking we can handle everything up top. And when we actually walked it, he could see that we couldn't. Well, I, I think it's a step in the right direction. I to be honest with you, to see what you're showing on screen here, I got to use a magnifying glass. Oh, I'm uh, so sorry. But um, I mean, in concept, I, I don't have a problem. Good, I'll send this out to you. I think it looks um, good we too. We don't have to make a decision immediately, um, but I would like to get uh, our announcement and the general plan in a write-up in the Ashford Citizen for April. So our, I don't know when our next meeting is. Yeah, I, I Catherine, I, I wonder if we ought to try, instead of ballyhooing this thing or whatever, just to try to open it as quietly as possible for the first couple of weeks as a trial program, and then work it in that way 
before we publicize it a whole lot other than just word of mouth from the general public? I hadn't thought of it that way. Um, and you think that that would be, then uh, how would people know that don't go there as frequently? Well, that I mean, if I understood you right from our last meeting, one of your concerns was us being barraged with loads of stuff. That might be able to, to cut down on that if people just see it as they go and, and not all at once bringing it down there. What, what do you think, Roger? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's you know, like opening a bar. You want to do a dry run. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, so we can identify issues, have a chance to identify issues early enough. But, you know, again, the way things spread on the Internet, who, who knows how quickly uh, this will this news will spread. I'm I'm fine for keeping it low key. Uh, it will spread. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. Uh, what will what could happen is it'll spread and people will get confused. Mm -hmm. um, they may be confused about how we're doing it, where it's going to be, that kind of thing. Yeah, but uh, I think so you'll, you'll it, I, you know, I think it's probably a good idea to move it around back. Um, but I, I think you'll get an idea within the first couple of weeks about traffic flow and, and just how it's going, and also getting our own crews used to what our expectations are. I, I'm just in favor of low keying it for now, just to open it on a trial basis see how it goes and then i mean if we need some major announcement we can do it after that how do we do that well we have the ashford facebook we also have our web page right um not every certainly not everybody uses the ashford facebook by any means um there's ashford community connections and we try not to use that as our primary source of information yeah. Well, I mean, maybe we want to put it into things that, that isn't going to bring everybody down there all at once. And then, then look at it at, you know, at, after we do it and we have our following selectments meeting, then we can discuss further whether we have to fine tune any of these plans. I think it's a step in the right direction, Catherine. I appreciate your work on it. Yep. Um, and yeah, Joe has been very, very helpful. Um, okay, I, you know, I don't have a problem with that. So we move on to the next things and then we can come back and uh, sure. see how we want to do each of these. Yep. So next one, town office building. This is Dicier. We need people to get their COVID shots. You know, go, doing something out in the fresh air uh, at the transfer station for the swap, swap shed um, is not as dangerous. Uh, as it is in the town office building. So um, what I'm, we're looking at is a limited opening in early June by appointment only. We've already set up a common calendar that can be used by the departments for scheduling, uh, setting up blocks of time, one person at a time. They're gonna have a temperature check. There's a sanitation station. They will be escorted in and out by the person they have the appointment with. We don't want them just wandering around. I can tell you that we don't have a way right now by any means to um, put up the appropriate kind of PPE or whatever you want to call it in um, the uh, executive assistance office, in the selectman's office, and in the assessor's office. People, uh, the the assessor's office, people come in and use the computer, and I cannot remember exactly what they're looking up, um, but they do come in and use that, and I've taken a look at it. One thing uh, Joe and I have talked about is a half door there, but that still doesn't solve the problem of uh, where the people come right into that office where the assessor is. So um, I would like to make sure that masks are continued to be used. I can tell you that a number of the employees have started, um, they've either scheduled their COVID shots or, or have started getting them. Mine is not scheduled until April 9th. Uh, and I think that there are some others as well. And uh, we should have at least two weeks after our last 
uh, vaccination uh, to be in a more safe mode. Uh, one thing I did think about was uh, rather than having, because we don't have a way of locking things off up here and, and, and being able to operate well, uh, would be uh, if someone was coming in, I would meet with them down in the lower level conference room, kind of keep them out of this area that we can't control as well. Also gun permits and transfer station permits, we've been having no problem uh, servicing people at the door. The uh, the uh, number of those that we get every day are quite a few. I'd hate to have to schedule blocks of time for people to come and get them. It'll just get in the way of everybody else. So those ones, I think it'd be perfectly fine to be able to do those at the door, as we have been. And in addition, we have people calling for transfer station permits that are um, they're calling and they're asking them to be mailed. We verify their address the number that they need, et cetera. We keep track of all that. And the other thing is, um, as Linda explained, we have, we have put in place a number of efficiencies due to COVID. Um, one thing is um, managing the constant interruptions that we have with a real traffic flow. And particularly when July hits, and we're going to have a ton of people that are going to want to, um, you know, typically come in in lines. They line up. Um, we're hoping that what we can do is some of the efficiency that we already set up as part of uh, putting things in place for COVID, that we're going to encourage the use of them. For example, they can do online title searches. They can get the forms. We have brochures, clarifying processes that we have. Linda has an excellent brochure on the tax tax work. Um, I know that Kara is working on one for the assessor's office. Um, we have a drop box. So um, that's one of the things we would really like to continue to encourage. Um, I know that for me, um, if I were uh, working elsewhere, and I had the ability to go in and do an online title search, you know, and I wanted to do that, I'd probably do that from home. I don't think I'd want to have to come in here to have to be able to do things that I can do independently. And there are, there will be people, there certainly are many of the elderly people are not gonna be able to do those kinds of things the same way. They don't use a computer as much or at all. So um, we wanna make sure that we're still available to them, but we're, it would be setting up an appointment to meet with us. Also, what we've talked about is changing our office hours and uh, Sherry or Linda or Kara, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, what we looked at was having office hours on Wednesday go to 7 p.m. and gives people time to get to the dump or the transfer station uh, and starting the day earlier. And I couldn't remember the start time if I got that right. And that's primarily the town clerk, the tax collector, the assessor, and the selectman. When it comes to our building department, we already have a signed contract uh, for the, the building clerk, and her hours do not work like that. Okay, so we can't do it with that particular office. At least I don't think we can. Uh, in addition, uh, we know she goes to school at night. And she she worked all of that around the work hours that we gave her and uh, is unable to really change that. And as far as others in the building, there's not really that kind of public contact at night. So what you're thinking about this? Well, again, I think it's valuable that we start looking at this and it's you know, the time is quickly approaching when we need to do this. Um, if if you could email us these you'll so we can put them out in front of us to yep, take a look at I think it would be a lot easier to work with. Yep, you'll mm -hmm. get the whole thing. Okay. And by the way, I worked on this today after talking with um, Joe again and then talking with the staff again. And uh, the staff has had input into this. Okay, moving on to the next thing, Knowlton Hall. 
Okay, so the hall has good airflow, the the main hall, and uh, I have a way to be able to make sure we have the good airflow and the ability to maintain social distance. What I'd like to do, I suggest, is town-sponsored events initially, starting in April or May. Okay, and a couple of them are Tai Chi and yoga. They're under the auspices of our um, Parks and Rec, and I believe our uh, seniors, senior center. And because it's such a, uh, you know, it's a big room, it has the windows to, that can be opened, it has doors that can be opened. Um, and then, um, and the number of people that are in these classes are not huge by any means. They can also um, set out little round discs that say, well, here's where you put your mat, that kind of thing. We have to be concerned about what's being touched and how it's being cleaned. Uh, again, masks would be required. Uh, and when I look at this as others, depending on the number of participants, I'm still talking about town-sponsored events. I'm not talking about birthday parties. I'm not talking about things that are not part of the programs that, that our office um, uh, kind of oversees. And then uh, once the COVID threat lessens, and the state increases the number of event participants, we can start to expand that. Access would be based upon priority. That is, um, you know, set up a schedule for Tai Chi, set up a schedule for yoga. If the library has something that has a small number of people, you know, make sure that we've established what the priority is in terms of who, who, has, who has dibs. And it'll be dependent upon what other things we can bring in there that are, can be managed. Now, while I'm talking about that, I will tell you that on March 23rd, I'm going to be attending a seminar that, um, that was recommended by our HVAC people. That's trained. And that seminar will have a number of doctors, et cetera. Uh, and there will be uh, talk about different products that are out there that helped purify the air. There is a product I'm interested in learning more about, which was demoed here the other day. And that one actually makes um, viruses inert. And if that's the case, then we have an opportunity, uh, and I'm getting pricing on it, we have an opportunity to perhaps be able to use some devices like that uh, to be, you know, make the viruses inert in, in the environment uh, for events. And even on a day-to-day -day basis, and particularly in the town office building, because that's where ultimately we'll have the most traffic. So, and then cleaning services, making sure that we have appropriate cleaning services for Knowlton based upon the activity that's going on there. Any thoughts about this? At first blush. No, nope, seems good. We're moving in a positive direction. This is good. Thank you. Bill, are you okay? I'll send it out to you. Okay, so that's Knowlton. Then there's the senior center. Uh, I've talked with Kip. Um, she would like to, to uh, she too is in the process of getting her COVID vaccinations and we only have one senior center director. And that is the issue that we have with, you know, even within here, we only have one of some people. We only have one assessor, one tax collector. Um, so, and she looked at it and went, how about a limited opening starting on June 19th, which is a Saturday. And Bill, you would probably remember this. In 1994, on June 18th is when the doors first opened and there was a big celebration. I was there. Yeah. So she, um, I didn't write down all the activities that she mentioned to start, but she started to, to um, I hope I spelled Mahjong right. I couldn't remember. Um, but the numbers that you see are uh, kind of the number of people that are, have been involved with those in the past. And it's something where it, it can be managed in the senior center. And then at these, there's other activities as well where they have a lower number of participants. Again, with the masks, 
and then expand once the COVID threat and uh, lessens and the state increases the number of event participants and expand 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 into Dime Bingo. And then APSCO has Bingo, which they would be thrilled to start, I'm sure. And this is one of those areas where should that device that I was talking about be a viable option, it would it would cover it covers a thousand square feet. And um, this would be, and it's portable. Okay, and we'd need a few of them. I don't know how many. I've got a, that's getting worked out. Uh, but it could be taken over there. Um, the uh, setup for a while, people could come in, and the threat of COVID or probably almost anything else would be a lot less. And I don't expect that COVID's going to go away. I think we're going to have different variations, variants. And um, just looking to try and keep people safe and still let them start to have some fun and be with each other. So that's what it is for the senior center. Any thoughts about that? I think it looks good. Same here. Okay. Well, that's all I have in that presentation. I'll send that out to you. As soon as I do, people are going to get wind of this because it'll be part of the minutes. That's fine. And whatever, whoever's listening, so just be aware. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, and uh, uh, again, with the timing for these, does it seem like reasonable timing at this point? Well, everybody's being inoculated and what have you. I think it makes sense. Yeah. Especially not knowing what's going on with state and how they're going to open. Right. I do understand that through my state office and that, that there are considerations being made to move up municipal employees. Um, I know right now we're working strictly on an age guide, but there are certain areas that are being looked at to try to prioritize because of their contact with the public. So I think a lot of this, we just, we have to stay tuned, let it mature as it's, it's happening right now. Right. Um, I will say, I just want to put in a little plug for Melissa. Um, she's been helping people get their appointments, um, a number of people who were uh, struggling. So uh, she's been a very nice job with that. Uh, we have someone, um, we've had a couple people who were having difficulty and she's got managed to get their appointments. Um, and they were there are people that are more at risk than others. So pretty that was pretty Thank good. You, mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let me get back to our regular agenda. What's the next thing on the agenda? Uh, discuss an act on the assessment exemption and waiver. Ah. Uh, and did we did we send out that letter? Chris? We got the letter and I'm okay. ready to make a motion on it. Okay. Uh, based on our discussions from our last selectman's meeting, the recommendations with the alternatives from our assessor and the fifth products uh, sending in the letter that we had requested, I will move to grant the uh, exemption and the penalties that were associated uh, or discussed prior. Very good. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Yeah, good job, Carol. I'm being proactive about that. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thanks very much. And what's the next thing on the agenda? While well, I try to get myself out of this thing. Lords Commission Committee appointments. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, sharing. Good. Thank you. And <laughs> Let's look at the first one. First one is Enlin Wetlands uh, to fill a vacancy created by the resignation of Bob Michelle, and the term is to June 1st, 2023. Um, I got an email from Lenny the other day. He hasn't come up with anybody to take Bob's seat yet, but as soon as he does have a recommendation from the commission, he'll send it on. Um. From what I could tell, um, Bob was an, is, was an excellent member of that board. And so his shoes are going to be hard to fill. Okay. 
And the next thing, why can't I find that? Agricultural Commission. Dan Zaitchek. John Allopy, Luther Branch, and Doug Jan Janay. So moved. Second. Oh. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. All right. Next one is the Board of Assessment Appeals. Term to expire 11 2021. 20, We're going to have a Republican vacancy and a Democratic vacancy. No, there's a correction. Sherry, which one? It's just to, to fill the Democratic vacancy, right? Sherry? Yes, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. It's, it's just a Democratic vacancy, right? Yeah. It's a Liz Little's vacancy. Um, yes. And so we, do we have a name for that one yet? No. Okay. Um, while we're there, I just want to mention the Board of Assessment Appeals is going to be having a meeting. And uh, I have, I think I asked uh, both of you selectmen, um, I, I'm letting them use the uh, downstairs conference room because the nature of their meeting is one where they might actually be going outside to look at a car or whatever. And there's only three members on that board, as far as I recall. And so they can manage the social distancing and the uh, minor traffic. Everybody has an appointment for that meeting in 15 minute chunks. So they're all set for that. And then the rec commission. You, you did mention that to me and I agree with that, Catherine. And rec commission, regular member to a full term. Uh, that would be reappoint Sandra McQuinn. McQuinn. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Rec, uh, Recreation, Recreation Commission to alternate members to terms to expire 331-24 and 331-26. We don't have any names for that. Is that correct, um, Chris? Okay. And it doesn't matter what party they are. A political party? I don't remember. I don't even remember. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, we still we are still struggling in finding a chair for that committee as well. I nominate Paul Varga. For recognition. <laughs> I thought he was still on. I wanted to hear him moaning. I think he said <laughs> what you were gonna I will say. Call my nomination. Let's All do right. that. Let's do that in the next meeting we find them in, huh? <laughs> uh, okay, tax refunds. Uh, let's see, do we want Linda to speak to that? No, I have them. Very good. Uh, Timothy Firestone, in the amount of 2,274.63, citing 12-129. Is that, an over, is that an overpayment or what is that, that adjustment, Linda? Or that, that person paid online and it doesn't download right the next day. So they went back on and paid it again. Oh, double payment. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. okay. The next one is Mark Vinton in the amount of 95.48, also citing 12-129. Uh, Sean, Sean Bertram in the amount of 63.15, citing 12-129. Paul Schaefer in the amount of 84.76, citing 12-129. Laura Miller in the amount of 106.35, citing 12-129. I will move the refunds based on the uh, statute. Cited. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Oh, yes. oh, sorry. Christine, did you did you say Toyota? I didn't hear Toyota. 
for that Toyota leasing uh, entity? Yes, that was there. Thank you. Uh, no, it, I don't think it was. No. I no, saw I have, the packet, but I didn't. I have Laura Miller, Paul Schaefer, Sean Bertram, Mark Vinton, Timothy Firestone. Yeah, there was a Toyota leasing one that was in the packet. That was last meeting, I think, wasn't it, Linda? I'm, I'm looking. I thought they... Oh, okay. I think you're right. I'm sorry. I, I think, think it was last meeting. Right. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. There's been too many. <laughs> okay. I think there's a motion on the floor. <clears throat> I seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion passes. Okay. Remarks for the good of the board. I'll move adjournment. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a nice evening. Yes, and